Thanks for watching Rocket City Motors. Make sure to check out the video description for part numbers, kit part numbers, and related information regarding this video's content. If the video helped you, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button for me. Thanks for watching. In this video, we're going to be installing a seal kit on this 1979 six horsepower Evan Rude lower unit. Of course, in the video description is links to the seal kit, the impeller, um, and any special tools um, that I use. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove your impeller. You do that by removing the cotter pin, unscrewing this, and then your impeller should slide right off. This is the shear pin. Make sure you remove it and set it aside. It's also handy to have a magnetic tray to hold all your bolts and your shear pin and all your little metal pieces as you're going through this process. You're going to have to remove the cotter pin on the drive shaft. It's not really a cotter pin, it's more like a, a split pin. And to do that, you typically can just tap on one side and then pull it out with a pair of needle nose or vice grips or channel locks or something like that. You're going to want to hold on to this because somewhat hard to replace. You can find them. I'll leave a link or the part number, a link to the part number in the video description below. Uh, what they do is push up on a seal on the bottom side of your power head and they prevent water from getting up into the connection between your drive shaft and your power head. Once you have the propeller removed, you're going to want to remove the lower unit skeg. You remove the lower unit skeg through removing six bolts around the circumference and a pivot bolt right here. Sometimes the lower unit skeg, the six bolts around the circumference can be pretty difficult to remove if they've been in there for a while or someone used a blue light Loctite or some RTV sealant to uh, it got on the threads and it, it kind of makes the bolt stick. So a handy tool I've found uh, for this step is a hand impact driver. Um, you basically just hold it in there, it's a screwdriver, beat on the top while you twist and it usually breaks the bolts um, loose fairly easy and it also helps you not strip the bolts. Once you have the bolts removed you can remove the lower unit skeg it may be somewhat difficult because of the gasket and the seals but so you can take a rubber mallet and gently tap and it should pop right off the next step is to remove the gear assembly this linkage will slide right out of the way can then remove the this half circle piece that rides on the clutch dog. Once you've done that, the entire assembly you may have to get your rubber mallet again. Should slide right up and out. Now that you have the gear train out, you can disassemble the gear train. Once you get this piece off, the gear slides off and then the brass fitting. Once you have the gears removed, uh, you should just be able to pull straight up on the shift rod linkage and it should just come straight out. Next thing you can do is stuff a paper towel or an old rag down in here and that'll keep the oil from getting all over your floor or concrete. Next thing you want to do after you remove the split pan is remove water pump impeller housing. 
do that through these four bolts. Once you have those removed, you can just simply slide it up. And there's your housing, your water pump impeller. Here's the gasket and the plate. You can remove those. And next thing you can do is remove your drop shaft. On the drop shaft is a small key. This is what engages the water pump impeller through a small slot. You can see here, this key slides into that slot. This key can be removed from the drive shaft. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you don't lose it. So I would remove it, and that's why I think these plates are so handy because they're magnetic and it's not gonna go anywhere. The next thing we have to remove is this plate. Sometimes you can get a screwdriver underneath here and gently pry up on the edges. This edge is hard to get to, but the key here is to gently do this because you don't want to bend this plate. It is a soft metal. And there you have it. There is another gasket underneath it that will have to be cleaned off. For this, we're gonna need our special tool. That special tool is OMC part number 03045114. It is a Evinrude Johnson service tool. It's made specifically for removing the brass bushing seal on Johnson Evinrude outboards. And what it is, is it has tapered ends here. And that tapered end slides down in here. You can hit it with a hammer and it's gonna push that brass uh, bushing out. And why we need to get that out is because underneath it is a O-ring and that O-ring slides along this shift shaft and keeps water from getting past the shift rod and into the lower unit. In order to use the tool, we're gonna to need to remove this little metal clip piece right here. This is what it looks like. Put it off to the side. And you should be able to look down and see the brass fitting opening. It should slide right in there. So you should see it come through here. And so now we should be seated. We'll switch over to a metal hammer. There you have it. Well, the last few things we've got to do before the disassembly is complete is remove these seals here. You got one on this plate. You got one here at the end here. And then you got a little bitty rubber O-ring inside of your brass bushing. That's pretty easy to remove. These two are somewhat, uh, well, just require a little more patience and tenderness. Uh, what we got to do on this one, I've cleaned off these surfaces with this wire wheel brush right here. And once I got them pretty clean, um, what you can do is put them on a vise like this. I've got a screwdriver that I don't really care about. And what you can do is look through there, seat that screwdriver on the, on the lip of this bushing, you can see where I've already started to remove it. But get the screwdriver underneath that lip right there. And start punching it out. And there you have it. This one's somewhat the same way. 
except you may have to gently seat your clamp a little bit and That one was a lot easier. Now inside your brass bushing here, you just got a little rubber seal and it, just take a pick set, something similar, pry it out and this is what you're gonna replace. Probably need to clean up in there as well. Another part you gotta remove is the old O-ring seal. And that's it you got it all disassembled it's ready to install the seal kit uh, as you reassemble it thanks for watching and make sure to check out the second part of this video where we put it all back together